Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Camera Work Podcast number 18. And the guest today, I'm really glad to have this person here. This is Sean Cummings, who is the publisher of Show Magazine. What's up, Sean? What's up, John? Good to be back in New York City, kind of the place where it all started for me. Right. Now, we're going to talk very specifically about you and what you do and how you got to where you are in a minute. But one of the things we do on the podcast a lot is, as photographers, is we start off by talking about how the week went. Like, what did we do this week? Like, what did we shoot? So in your case, when did you come to New York? Because you live in L.A. I got now. here on Sunday. Right. You got here on Sunday. And what did you do from Sunday to today, which is Wednesday? Okay. Well, prior to Sunday, the night before, I had a photo shoot in Washington, D.C. Hotel room, five models uh, who are all paying for images. When I got in on right. Sunday... Now, stop there a second, because we're okay. going to talk about that. That's an interesting... Um, business model that you have mm -hmm. we're going to get to that but you shot five girls you said yes yeah, saturday the in previous the, night got in a up, hotel in the hotel right. in a hotel i took a train i uh, purposely missed my flight because i wanted to take the train into new york and uh had dinner with the family right and then hosted a party at starlet's with the star tenders right starlet's <laughs> that a strip club it is a strip yeah, club. Yeah, I don't, I don't get a text, though, that says, oh, come out to the we party. We all tweet. We tweeted on <laughs> Instagram. Tweeted it. I should so. get a personal text message that you says, should. we need you there. You, okay? didn't, you didn't miss much. One that uh, sounds like I have to be there so I can explain to my wife why I'm there. Right. Okay? <laughs> so, but um, you, you, shot, you, so you shot the girls in the hotel, and yes. then today is Wednesday. So yesterday was Tuesday, and you shot... We shot another five girls here, all aspiring showgirls, and these are models who want to break into the urban glam industry. Right. Typically, they need images to do that, and right. uh, also typically, those images will be submitted to a publication such as show. Right. Now, and we don't uh, take submissions for anything more than just to grant you an audition. Right. Whereas some publications will actually print images that you give them. Right. So if you book a shoot with us, um, it's kind of like cutting out the middleman. Because if we are going to take submissions, it's going to be from photos that we've produced ourselves. Right. Right. And you shot five girls here in my studio yeah, yesterday. Yeah, at your studio. You were very right. helpful in helping me you know, achieve the show style. This is something new for right. me with personally. some of the technical stuff. Yeah, right. this is something new for me personally because, you know, taking getting behind the camera after producing photo shoots for 10 years is a little different and it is a challenge. And now I see that, you know, the right. whole photography thing is right. not easy as I always thought it was. Right. Now, I would imagine, let's, let's just jump right into you now then. Now, again, so I met you 10 years ago. You were at Smooth. You were kind of like the editor directly underneath the... I was the underneath editorial the, director. I was not an editor, but I was, I was director. the main uh, editor or editorial director there. I was the editorial director. I came into Smooth right after the second issue had been completed, and that's when I met you because you right. worked on the, the second issue. Yeah, I jumped in very early on Smooth, and Smooth is kind of like, I don't know what you'd call it, like an urban male lifestyle magazine, well, I guess? Well, it's pretty much an urban version of Maxim. Right, so it's like about, we're going to say half, but it might probably not half, but half is like booty girls, and then half is like the current hip-hop artist, and then there's another chunk of like the clothes and the car or whatever. Right. That type of thing is what Smooth was. Right. And again, you were like editorial director, and I used to do a lot of like music artist shoots right. for them, and you assigned me a whole bunch of those. Like we right. did a lot of one-page things with like Mano and all these other, Jay Mills <laughs> and all this stuff, and then this feature called Can I Live, which right. was one of my favorite things to shoot ever. I mean, we would do like a six to eight page spread where I would follow an artist for the whole day. And, you know, we did like Trey songs in Virginia when he was just coming up. Right. And one of those shots is still in my current portfolio from back then. It just captured a moment of this kid on the brink of stardom and he wasn't there yet. Right. And it was just so cool when you follow them for the whole day. How hard was it to set those up with the artist, that type of a piece? Um, well, a little bit background. I mean, and we could talk about this if you want, just as right. far as like my genesis or origins over at Smooth Magazine. Right. But as far as setting up those photo shoots, right. it wasn't difficult as well. Back then, you know, publicists pretty much helped you program your magazine. Right. So in a sense, you know, if you wanted to know what you were doing for that issue, you would pretty much wait for publicists to email you mm -hmm. or call you. Right. And, I have, you know, Gorilla Black coming out, or I right. have Life Jennings coming out. I shot him, and I out. shot him. Exactly. These are all shoots that I <laughs> right. remember giving to you. Right. And, you know, it was a lot, it would have been easier for us to say, okay, give us your little standard image that you would see everywhere. I remember we did that with Ashanti. Right. We took the 
the publicity image from Ashanti, right. and that image was everywhere. Yeah, and it's boring for the audience because exactly. they've seen it 50 million times. Exactly. You want your own shit. And then you don't own that content. Right. So it really wasn't that, that difficult. I think the most difficult part was just coming up for the budget to make it happen. But in a lot of cases, right. the uh, labels back then, this is pre iTunes, would, right. you know, they would front the budget to, to yeah. pay for the shoot. I was thinking of how, like, in terms of how budgets are different, like, 10 years ago when I would do work for like Universal Records and they would fly me to like Atlanta or LA to take pictures at a music video, they would send a car to take me to the airport. And it was right. the best because, you know, you had like a 6 a.m. flight and like 4 a.m. There was that right. black car and you could just sit there and relax. And right. now it's like I got to call my mother and have her drive me to the <laughs> airport. And, you know, I love my mom, but it's kind of cool to get that car and right. to get off the airport with the sign. Right. And it says Ricard. And you're like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And I mean, every, now yeah. I haven't gotten a car from an airport in like five years. So it's well, my I mean, mom is the car when, now. When I was at, uh, you know, when I was at, at, at Smooth, you know, we were um, able to actually book advertising from record labels. Right. And now th that's all gone. Right. But and now there's a point because we've mentioned Smooth a whole bunch of times because it's where you and I met and where we started. But there's a point where you left Smooth. And I remember when you left. And the weird thing to me was I kept thinking like, man, I wouldn't want to be that dude. Because if you're in a low position and you leave, it's like, who cares? You find another low position. You start working your way back up. Right. You were really high on, I don't know if it was the number one magazine of that genre or number two. I don't know if black men would be considered one. I think, King, smooth was I two. think King was number one. King, I kind of put in a different like category because they kind of piggybacked off of um, what, double, what, XL. double XL. Right. So right. I'm not going to really count that. Just, so just to it make was, this it was easier. Like, it was like a big three. You had okay, the top fine. Three so it's magazines. top three. So to me, I was like, how in the world is he going to get a position in another magazine <laughs> to match it? And then, like, before you knew it, you came out with a magazine called Show. Right. And Show was kind of different because what you did in Show was, it was 100%, tell me if I, if I get anything wrong, tell me. It was 100% female. Like, there was no artists or anything like that. It was just girls. And the photography had a really unique look to it mm -hmm. on the on the plus side of the photography, it was like the images are very clean, the girls looked amazing, the retouching was like right on point, and um, you know, you could see the girl, and it's very much like, look how hot she is. Right. Don't you love New York with all the We're sirens? In New York, this yeah. is Times Square, man. <laughs> we don't get this in LA. <laughs> right. But the, the weird thing was that, like, each issue looked very similar to the previous issue. Right. It's not like you went, well, we went to Miami last week, let's go to right. Oklahoma. It was always like studio, white, the whole issue right. would be like a white backdrop or a pink backdrop, right? So, and Nick, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. Salem Benny. Salem Benny shot it. And he mm -hmm. does some of like Kim Kardashian stuff because you right see him now, on that yes. show every now and then. So the dude's up there right. photographically. But where did the decision come from to shoot the magazine in a kind of repeatable way? Was that a money thing? Was it artistic? Yeah. What was it? Well, starting from the beginning. First, I didn't leave Smooth. I got fired. So <laughs> right? that Nobody out. ever admits that. Why did they fire you? Because nobody ever, nobody's ever gotten... It's you're okay. the first guy in the world to ever get fired from a job, man. I mean, I've been fired know, from a law firm. I got okay? fired for insubordination. So. <laughs> right. what, was the, do you wanna, what was the insubordination? What did I do? Like, go yeah, curse out the boss? No, I didn't curse out the boss. I would never do that. Um, no, it was just one of those situations where you just got too big for your britches and right. I'm a type a personality and I always was right. one of those people that preferred to you know ask for forgiveness rather than permission right so after the fact some right. of the things that I wanted to do I kind of saw the future a little bit and I right. and and I knew that um you know the whole urban glam model thing yeah. was kind of going to take off was going to be big and and I know big, like yeah. towards the end of your thing I mean we had I don't know if it was one day or two but we had at least one day where I mean in this studio at like 10 or 11 p.m. at night, we must have had 20 girls that we were shooting right. in bikinis, and there right. was like, there's alcohol in the back, it was a whole thing, you know, yeah. like, forget about it, you know, <laughs> but yeah, like you say, if it's not your own magazine that you own, then maybe certain things you can't do without right. permission, exactly. but then if you ask for permission, it always ends up being a no, because right. people don't understand it, and on and on and on, but, but getting back to the question of the artistic vision, the idea of kind of having this repeatable formula for the photography. Yeah. Did that come from Nick or did that come from no, you? No, no. What you have to understand is um, Nick started shooting show on the Stay second. Close. Uh, Nick started shooting show on the right. second issue. So okay. the way the idea came from an issue that I did with Smooth Magazine, which was mm -hmm. Smooth Girl Number Three. And when I met Mark Mann, you know, mm -hmm. he was doing some shoots for Bad Boy with us, and his whole idea mm -hmm. was just shooting on like a backdrop. And right. um, when I decided to do Smooth Girl 3, with, right. you know, the celebrity issue, I hired him and he bought the idea of the, 
you know, clean kind of colorful backdrops with the right. lucite furniture. Right. And the funny thing, right, you know, one of the funny things about that though is like your photographers would go, oh, I don't like shooting in a studio. You know, I like to, you know, get documentary stuff and right. you say if an artist or whatever. And I'm always saying like, like, yeah, of course, it's a hell of a lot easier. If you say to me, you're going you're gonna to send me to Virginia for Trey songs and let me follow him for the day while he goes to his record label, he goes to the gym, he goes to his mom's house, he goes to the restaurant. That's an easy thing to shoot because stuff is happening. The hard thing is to take Trey songs and put them on a white background and you're stuck with this guy for two hours and you're trying to come up with posing or interesting lighting. Mm. It can be very difficult to shoot in the studio and, right. and to photographers who say they don't like to shoot in the studio. You know, if you don't like it because you really don't like it, you want to be shooting surfers, cool, go right ahead. But when it's a when when you're just doing a cop out because you don't know how to pose people or right. you're afraid of that one-on-one -on -one direct interaction, I'm looking right at you like, okay, pose for my camera. You know, you're, you're kind of punking out on that part of the photography. So that type of clean thing that show shoots, you could look at it like, oh, it's easy. But in another sense, it's very difficult because you don't have a lot of no, stuff in, to work in with. In every sense, it's very difficult, in particular for the models and in turn for the photographer. Um, you know, there's no wrapper to lean on. There's no furniture. This is what I'm saying. It's there's very no hard to pose. Bed, there's no waterfall right. in the background. So it's right. it's show because you're on stage. You have seven lights hitting you, and it's all about right. you. But, but in any right. event, so you guys started coming up with a kind of repeatable formula. Right. And I don't know how many issues you've done. I mean, it's it's a million We've done like now. over 50 issues. I mean, yeah. and it what happened was when you know when I um, left you know Smooth or got fired from Smooth, <laughs> right. you know I signed a deal to do a mobile uh, a mobile contract before I even signed a print contract. Right. And, and I, around what year was this? Because I don't think mobile was, was booming at that point. Yeah, mobile was mobile was just taking off, Jamster right. and everything like that. Right. So um, you know, we signed a deal with um, Zenia, I believe it was was the name of the company, not Zenia, but it started with a Z. Right. And you know, they gave us a, a mobile contract to produce images for them, so we would do that with with the you know with the show images. And as beautiful as show looks, you know, on a piece of paper, it's always right. looked better with light behind. Oh, it. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the screen. It looks. So, that's why everything you shoot with your iPhone looks great because right. it doesn't never gets printed. It's right. on a screen, and the colors right. are just popping like that. So right. we purposely shoot the way that we shoot because of the mobile deal and because of economically, it's just right. very easy to do to get six girls in the studio in the background. There's no like location rental. Right. In California where we shoot, most photographers come with their own studio. Mm -hmm. So there's no studio there's no studio fee either. Right. As well. And then you know right. we, we added the Lucite furniture from the first issue. We shot the first issue in New York and in Miami. And then when we went to LA and got up with Slick Force, you know, they right. had a studio and we would rent the Lucite furniture. Right. So and you do that. what happens with show is kind of like uh, you know, in, in gymnastics, every athlete has to do the exact same exercise and you get to be judged on the same parameters. So that's kind of how you and do the that's posing kind of the way to some degree. Well, that's the way we have our classic show poses. We have the stool right. shot, we have the chair, we have the box. So you get to kind of compare, uh, you know, a model from 2006, right. you know, a Dalicia to, you know, a Jessica Maximus to a Drea. Right. You are shooting the magazine now. Right. 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 And, and the funny thing is, is I talked about this on a podcast last week and we shot, we filmed that podcast on Saturday and today's Wednesday, it's like four days ago. And I didn't identify you. I just told the story that somebody who I've known a long time contacted me about a rental and then he asked about the gear and then I said, oh, we'll have the photographer contact me and we'll talk, you know, man to man about the gear. And then you're like, no, I'm shooting it. <laughs> you know? And what I said on a podcast and I had not, had not identified you. So I could have clowned you, whatever. No one would have known who I was ever talking about. Right. But what I said was, I don't look at that as like, oh, this dude thinks he can shoot. I look at like, of course he can shoot it. Because at the point where the vision is figured out, anybody can shoot it. Because anybody can, it's the vision that's the, the, well, the think, hard part. I think anyone can shoot it if you have a gift of being able to recognize and, and executing someone else's vision. I think as a photographer, that's kind of what you have to do, and that's what Slick Force did so well. But if that's the that, only thing you're doing, you're not going to get any work. Because what do you need me for? You can shoot the magazine. No, not necessarily. I mean, there are technical... No. You had Nick shooting it originally, correct? As the main guy for the most right. issues. Right. And then Nick dropped away, and then who shoots it now? Christian. Does it look the same? Yeah. There you go. And when you shoot it, how does it look? Hopefully it'll look the same. There we go. That's my point. But that's my point is that right. 
So can a photographer shoot for show? Can I bang on your door and say, I can shoot the next issue? You're going to be like, dude, I can shoot it myself. Well, now now I'm going to be like that. But in the past, right. you know, you can imagine we've had a lot of photographers. Who, uh, everybody wants to shoot who, the girls. Who wanted to yeah. wanted to shoot the girls. but yeah. And we see a lot of photographers who try to do right. what we've done, but they just haven't stayed true to the vision. Right. You know, they pretty much just, oh, it's, you know, clean background and it's a girl and it's a couple of lights. And that's right. not really what show is about. Right. Well, that's the know? funny thing is when we were setting up the lights on, on whatever days yesterday we were yeah, setting up the lights yesterday, yesterday you were kind of directing where you wanted the lights to go and it was conflicting with what I would have normally done right. but the thing is is for me and I give myself credit for this you know one little compliment over 18 podcasts is <laughs> if I'm working as a photographer then I understand I'm in charge I'm gonna do what I got to do but at the point where I say to you I am gonna assist you and I'm gonna help you with whatever you need that means you know if I got to go run and get paper towels if I got to mop the floor whatever you need I'm gonna help you do that right. day which is what I said to you I'm going to help you light it, and I'm going to try to do it the way you want it done. I'm not going to step in and go, dude, I've been shooting eight years in this exact building and 20, you know, 10 years before then, and let me tell you, I didn't do that. Right. I was like, tell me what you want, and I'm going to set it up and help you try to figure it out. And in the end, what you did made complete sense. It didn't make sense to me initially. It really didn't because we had like two umbrellas in the front and two strip boxes on the side, another umbrella on the top, whatever. But as we were looking at it on a computer, you were like tweaking it. You're looking at it like, there needs to be a light here. This needs to be brighter. This needs to be darker. We would run and fix it. And when you put it on a screen, if you remember, I kept going, that looks like show. Right. Like that looks like show magazine. And right. you're almost in a technical sense, you're actually overexposing the image. You, I don't know if you realize that, but in a technical sense, you're overexposing the images because like the white paper is dirty, but it's not even showing up dirty because the white paper is being overexposed. Right. But I think the trick, and none of this is a secret because Nick does like DVDs telling how he lights shows. So it's no secrets here. But the thing that's interesting to me is what's happening is because you're using so many lights, mm -hmm. you're using super soft light. And when you overexpose the super soft light, it doesn't look bad. Right. It would be different if you overexposed it with harder oh, light. Sorry, sorry. But because your light is so soft, because there's so many of them, it's like six. Yeah. You wanted a seventh, which well, I didn't even have like another head. We'll, we'll have it tomorrow. It for tomorrow we'll manage it. Right. <laughs> but there's so much we got to talk about, man. Let's yeah. finish the brand of show and then we'll talk about like tomorrow. But so currently, and again, I think this stuff is interesting for photographers to understand of how it's not enough to just be a photographer. You can't just be the guy who takes pictures. You need more than that. So for you, you're the publisher. And again, you're able to shoot the magazine, which I think is cool. And then the show business model of where you're making the money, because mm -hmm. we know publishing has started to fall away a bit. People right. are not buying tons of seven dollar magazines and you have a lot of competition on a newsstand right so where else does the income come from yeah. when we're talking about I mean, show? We, we've never made money on the newsstand we've at best broken even because we don't have advertising i mean we advertise our own products you know that's right there's no ads in the yeah magazine. so basically yeah. show yeah. is the brand it's the platform and right. everything is generated from the yeah, magazine. That's right, because the only ads really is like to go sign, to get the calendar or get right. some DVDs to get the calendar, and to things join like the website, that. To do the right. DVDs now right. to shoot in hopes that you oh, there's can an ad in there to shoot. Girl. I never saw that. Well, yeah, we started advertising our super shoots. Um, and how does that last work? What year. is the rate or whatever? How does so it work? So basically, what does it say the ad? you know, if you want to be a model or if you want to be a showgirl, what right. better way than to shoot with us? Right. And we're going to produce show quality images. We're going to give you consultation. You're right. going to meet me and you're going to be able Ooh. to talk to me. And, <laughs> Can get your autograph and, you know, too. <laughs> you're going to get a promo video. You're going to get show right. branded images. Right. So in a sense. Is the rate posted on the ad? Well, the rate is not posted on the ad because right. it, it fluctuates. But typically, right. you know, it's $300 a look. And that's okay. comparable to most photographers. Right. Who are shooting models in hopes of getting those models in magazines. Right. But the weird part, though, is that the girls either used to get paid to be in magazines or didn't get paid, now they're paying to get in a magazine. Well, so girls, in that sense, it's weird. Yeah. But on well, the other girls sense, still get right. paid to be in a magazine, but in essence, I don't think they would have a problem with paying us because what they get, I've seen right. girls get tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars just by being in a magazine. Look at Adrea. Right. Right. Adrea Michelle, who's on you know Basketball Wives and who's on Guy Code on MTV, right. you know, her first time you ever saw her or heard about her was in show magazine right you know she was in show number 15 and she did the cover of um BL9. and where does some money come from it comes from hosting parties and well, stuff with her i Stay mean closer yeah with her it right came there. from doing music videos you know she did round of applause with waka flocka right um you know she caught the eye of chris brown and started 
being down with his crew. And from there, she caught the eye of the producers of, you know, Basketball Watch. Right. So now her money is generated from her brand in general. And right. her brand consists of, you know, clothing. It consists of... Uh, yeah, yeah. She was on BT the other day. She said she's coming out a with a bikini stuff, line. But really, it's her. Right. And the thing is, is know? I have this thing. I really hate the word brand. And I hate it because so many people misuse it. You have people right. who do only one thing. Like, I'm a photographer. And then they're talking about it. And I'm a brand. In my opinion, not a brand if you only do one thing. Right. You've got to do multiple things. So I look at the UFC. To me, that's a brand because I like the UFC magazine. They've right. got the athletes I like. They've got the girls I like in the magazine. Right. They do a reality TV show. It's probably the only reality show except for Love and Hip Hop New York that I enjoy watching. Mm -hmm. And then they do the UFC fights, and I enjoy that. That's a brand. They put out multiple products, right. and I connect with all of them. But if you're just taking pictures, that's not a brand. You need to do right. other things. But with you guys as yeah, show, show is a brand. I you mean, are a brand always... because. But let's run through it. So we got the mag, we got the print magazine, and then you also have a service where you can photograph models and make them right. look a certain way and get them into the magazine. Right. You what can, else is part of the show? You can look at our brand. brand by our revenue streams. But if, right. That's what I'm saying. Get to the other yeah, points. So of the revenue what you streams. Do. Number one is the printed product. Okay. Right. So after that, you have back issue orders. You have subscriptions. Right. Right. After that, you have mobile. Right now, you can right. still overseas. A lot of people download images, mobile right. images. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have an app in the Android store where you could buy you know, images of the sexy ladies of show. So right. you also have digital. And digital is where you can buy the magazine in a digital format. Right. So if you go to Zinio.com, you could buy Show Magazine. Mm -hmm. You could buy all of our back issues. Right. You could buy all of our six different titles. Right. So we also have you know, a situation where we book models or, you know, you're able to book models through show magazine. Right. Now, that's another whole thing because the, the party promoters, what ends up happening is these guys are having a party. There's a party every Friday night in Atlanta right. in 30 different spots. How am I going to get people to my party? Right. Well, if I can say Drea is at my party, people are going to come to yeah. mine and not the other party. Or if you say show magazine is at your party, right. the girls are well, going to Well, this is the thing, out. but for them it becomes, well, how do we get Drea? Well, if they contact you, they can find Drea. Right. And then if you're that mediator, now Drea knows she's not going to get screwed. You're going to make sure the money's right, right that it gets paid. And I guess she's got like some kind of rider. Yeah, we just did you know. the same thing. And we will do it with our cover model. So, for instance, we just did a party in... Uh, in um, Maryland with Delicious from Flavor of Love. Right. And it was completely booked through us. Right. So that'll happen whenever someone is in the magazine or they're in the right. cover models. We will handle all of the bookings that come through us for that particular model. Right. So that's one different revenue stream right there. We also license images. There's different calendars and different people, t-shirt oh, companies, what have you. that aren't put out by um, Smooth. But the girls get a piece of that or they just sign no, it right No, no. The girls, I mean, the girls have their own revenue streams and they're able to generate their right. own revenue by being noticed in the magazine. Right. But they know in advance that the stuff can get sold elsewhere. Yeah, that's all That's all in, in the model release. That's Do you all, tell that's them though? Because that girl, you know, those things can be incomprehensible. No, I mean, that's something that they should know. They should read the model release, but they know. Right. I mean, they know, and that's mm -hmm. just part of being a show model. But what we try to do is we try to generate revenue for the models as well. So right. being in show, and one of the reasons why we call it show, it's about being on stage, it's about being a performer, it's about being an entertainer. Right. So being in the magazine and doing a photo shoot is only really 5% of what you do as a showgirl. Right. A lot of it is in-person appearances, hostings. Right. We've taken models yeah. overseas. We're about to go to Turkey with Miss Joy this weekend. So, you know, they that's know cool. those opportunities are going to be extended to right. them as well. Yeah, that's a big difference from before where the girls, because I used to shoot Black Men magazine, which mm -hmm. was in, very similar in some ways. It was, you know, just a lot of girls. And I shot it for like three years starting in like 2000, maybe 2001 I started. Right. There were a few years of that. But the girls didn't have all those opportunities that they have right. now because of the web. They couldn't build a following. If you like, like, like Pasha was one of the girls we shot. She was the Nelly Hot in Here girl. You yeah. know, she looked amazing in the video. and very hard to shoot one of the hardest girl shoots i ever did in my life but um you know she wouldn't have anywhere to go after that once she did the issue it's like you know how does anybody contact her how does she book any work there was right. no way for the average guy to contact her now they've got twitter instagram people can find them and people like you that are like managing them to some degree right. you know they definitely have more opportunities so all that stuff i guess works good for the girls yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, how do you find shooting it? What are some of the, like, say, difficulties or not difficulties or what? I mean, to me, it's always fun, right? Like, right. shooting the girls is always, it never gets old, correct? Like, no, a, a pretty it, girl in front of the yeah, camera? Yeah, that's the key. <laughs> right. If it's a pretty girl, if it's a talented <laughs> model, really all you're doing is looking through the viewfinder and pressing the button. Right. If it's a, a model who's not particularly attractive, because remember, you know, if we're charging you to, to shoot just for the pictures, not to be in the magazine, 
you know, anyone right. can sign up, and you're going to get new right. models. You're going to. But get, what do you do? So if they pay for the shoot, do do they know if they're going to be in a magazine? No, no. They, I mean, the the thing is, is though, you pay for the shoot, you're not right. guaranteed anything. You're not paying to be in the magazine. Right. You're paying for the opportunity to be in front of us. Right. You're paying for the opportunity to get magazine quality images. Right. And maybe, if you're hot enough, you'll get published. If right. not by us, but by someone. And right. models do this with other companies, not just with right. us. You know, okay. we just happen to be, I think, the first magazine that's, mm -hmm. or the first magazine on our, our level, you know, of the right. major urban glamour magazines right. that's now doing it directly. Let's do it that way. What, um, what are the challenges, though, when you're shooting? How many shoots have you done so far since you decided to start shooting? I've been so shooting for about, I uh, think, like six weeks. So the challenges okay. are always just technical challenges and time and managing your time. And right. when we do a typical show shoot, you know, uh, with our photographers, It'll, for, to shoot five to six models, it'll be like a 10-hour day minimum, never less than 10 hours. Yeah. Most of the time, it'll be between 10 to 12 hours. Yeah, all hijacked and, by and hair and makeup. Right? Yeah, and that's, <laughs> well, and that's three, uh, three looks yeah. a piece, in it, but there's always a lot of downtime. It's kind mm -hmm. of like a football game where a football game might last four hours, but there's only 10 minutes of yeah, action. Yeah, if you were to just edit it together. That's but how do, but does hair and makeup are. drive you crazy? They drive me crazy. How long they take sometimes? <laughs> well, the, the thing it's that like, drives me crazy yeah. about hair and makeup is that they'll be sitting there doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, I need this girl. Then they take that right. opportunity it, to get the girl ready. My issue with them is and it is the idea that none of them give accurate time estimates. Like if you say how long do you need, they'll go 20 minutes. But they don't mean a 20 minutes in the sense of it's 7.40, she'll be ready at 8. Right. They just mean that kind of generic Eric, I'll be there in a minute. And it's just something to get you out of their face. Right, but it's not right because sometimes if you're not, for, say, for show, but a lot of times you're shooting in a location, you got to be out by five. Right. You know, if you're telling me the girl's going to be ready in three minutes, that should mean three minutes. Right. And whatever that is, 180 seconds, that's what that should mean. Not just this random. Yeah, you can't rush minutes. artists. Oh, God. And then they're, they're painting eyelashes. You're like, you know, we've got an entire shoot to do when you're worried about her eyelashes. Right. The camera's not even going to resolve her eyelash on the full length shot. Just but, you know, throw her out there and let's shoot Typically sugar. with us, I mean, it's it's usually worth it because again with show it's just a model on stage and she's being hit by you know a million lights and right. you see everything so all those little details right. matters and right. you know you can't really rush them you just have to manage your time and your no, expectations. No, I think they need to be rushed. What happens with you guys, you're probably using kind of we steady use makeup people. people yeah, right? we use the same people. So, so they're probably in a groove with you that they're doing a pretty good job of doing it the way it needs to be done to make the day work. Right. But but in reality, like I said, in my, I look at it almost like they hijack the shoot sometimes because what they do is they don't, again, in my opinion, again, this is 15 years of shooting, they don't look at the big picture. The, the hair girl or the hair guy, whatever, never says, okay, we've got five looks to do and we need to be out of the location at 5 p.m. and it's 2 o'clock. No, they don't do that. No, they just they go, don't care about that. Right. All they're going is like, I want the hair to look perfect. But you can't look at it that way. You can't have tunnel vision. It's not fair because you're hijacking the shoot because by the time I get her, now I've got 30 minutes to do my job and then I've got to compromise my lighting or my posing because you took your dear sweet time. Now I've got to rush the photography part. It's not right. They should have a much broad, broader way to look at the shoot and understand how much time this should take. And, and again, and if you're telling someone 15 minutes, it should mean 15 minutes. It should not mean 30 minutes or 45 minutes. You know, it's good luck with that. Yeah. And believe me, and I'm talking from the top ones to the ones starting right. out to the top ones. I've worked with all of them and they're all the same in that regard. And it's um, always frustrating for me. And when I kind of cultivate my own people, the ones who are doing testing with me that I've chosen to be on set, they understand it a little bit better because I've stressed that point to them and explained how none of us benefit. Like if you take two hours to do the makeup and you give me 13 minutes to do the photos, at the end, the, the photos are going to suck. And that's not going to benefit you and it's not going to benefit me. We'd have been better off if you took one hour and I took an hour and we divided that time and not you took 80% of it and gave me 20% of it. It's not right. right. You know, it's not right, you know, at all. But um, so tomorrow we may have something happening here tomorrow, which is kind of cool, right? What might happen here? Very is, interesting. Is it We're, confirmed or is it not? Confirmed? No, it's confirmed. I mean, oh, they're good, on their good. way up right, right now. Um, you know, I was going to talk to you about that too, as far as the timing, because you know right. they want a window of five to ten p.m. Okay. So we're planning on shooting Tahiri, uh, who's actually on uh, our calendar right now. She's been on the cover. Yeah, you put it up on the wall. I wish that we have a video camera here, but you can't see it. <laughs> she's it, on the cover of Show Twenty Three, and mm -hmm. she's also June 2013 in our current calendar. Right. And I like so, I shot her a, like in Jersey about six or eight months ago, like in an apartment. Okay. And it came out really great. What She's was that fantastic. For? We just shot it. Okay. I just had an idea of how I wanted to shoot it. I used my Leica and we did it kind of very soft. It again wasn't well, like show, it was very graphic. For? 
nothing. They haven't gone anywhere yet. Like she's okay. got them, I've got them, but I haven't found a specific outlet that I want it to give them to. Well, there's and this thing called the internet. You could probably I could just put like throw it up there. on my blog, but I wanted it someplace that got more attention. You got to tell me where. Instagram. We'll put them there. Instagram. No, it, that's useless for me. Uh, I get twelve likes on like a great photo. Well, you need like, to cultivate a better Instagram following. I struggle with that, and right. but you have all those opportunities. You should create. Yeah. You should think of it. You are a curator of a beautiful museum called the John Ricard Museum of Photography. Right. Mm -hmm. And you curate it and you go out and you advertise yourself and you right. get fans. You'll get fans. Right. You'll get people who want to see what you're doing. Right. And now, it's weird because a lot of stuff I shoot never makes it really to the to like Instagram at all. Like I'll put almost like the behind the scenes shot, but I usually won't post the real shot there. You should. I'll just post like the girl getting ready and then a lot you of times I don't post the real shot ever. You should post the real just, shot. You, you know. should have you know, yeah. you should do it. I'm telling you yeah. that there's yeah, so I mean, many people that would love what you're doing. What you have on your computer, wherever you keep your photos, is is coffee table books upon coffee table books of wonderful New York life and life everywhere else that people don't get to experience, and they want to experience that. You have to be able to tell a story, and here's your way to tell a story. I mean, that's what's happening with a lot of you know media companies. Like you're fighting this new medium, you're fighting this new technology, mm -hmm. and you know you think of a million different ways not to embrace it and why you don't like it, mm -hmm. but you can't really look at it like it's just an outlet. It's just a way for you to continually express yourself, to do what you love. If you love this, there's going to be tons of other people who love it as well, and they want to love right. it for the same reasons that you love it. And here's a right. way to, to reach them. But one of the things I thought was interesting when you were shooting Smooth is like, some of the stuff I'll shoot like for magazines, they don't want it Instagrammed until it's published. Whereas you actually brought a backdrop, which we're using if you're watching this on YouTube, because we put this on iTunes, but if you're watching a YouTube version, you can see I, I left the show magazine banner behind <laughs> us, and you put it up for what reason? What did you tell the girls? Well, I mean, to take pictures. I mean, to Instagram them. It's instant. The internet, everything, social. If, if you're a company that wants to hide your images until it's printed, then you're a fool, because... You're not going to make any money off of the printed product like that. And, and just this is going to generate interest. The people who are going to buy your print are still going to buy it regardless. But there's so many people. There's so much free content. There's so much free content out there is that you have to control it. And you have to get it out there. Like, we're about to literally publish images on Instagram. Like, we're going to produce a spread. We're going to make it fit properly for Instagram. Right, like shot as a square and yeah, all that. and we're going to put it out there. We're going to give away our content for free because we have other ways of generating revenue, but you have to be familiar with that content. There's so many people bootlegging our content right now that we need to be able to beat them to the punch. And Instagram is one of the ways Instagram to do it. Instagram is, is one of the ways to do it. And the great thing about Instagram is that the most you could do is copy that little square. That's it. Right. You know, you could repost something, but everyone knows like it's in a other words, repost. Once you put There's it on Instagram. There's no way to really bootleg something on Instagram yeah. if it only exists on Instagram. Right, you can only put on another Instagram, essentially. You could repost, but a repost essentially tells you where the original post right. was from. Right, Yeah, so they can't do that that they can't like damage. just take your stuff and make it their own, which is right. what they do if it exists everywhere else, even on our own website. The minute we put our magazines live on our website, our images live on our website, people take them and repurpose them. And because show images essentially exist, you know, with nothing around it, it's easy to crop it and change the color of the background or cut it right. out of the background or do right. whatever you want with it. So we need to kind of be ahead of that. Do the girls like get mad at you because they don't understand? Do they come to you and go, why am I on? The girls are the main ones doing it. The girls are only <laughs> shooting for the content for their Instagram. Girls shoot because they want a new Avi. Right. That's it. Right. You but know, how hard is hey, it dealing look, with... Hey, look, calling us right now. Oh, look at that. There you go. Put her on speaker, but tell her she's on the podcast. <laughs> tell her. Hey, Tahiri. Hey, Mom. I'm doing a podcast right now, so you're on speaker, but... Okay, you, can you... You're... Okay, then can you call me so you want to care? Of course I will. Bye, Tahiri. Bye. It's John Ricard. <laughs> Bye. Okay. You know, so yeah, the girls are the girls are, are your main partners in this. Right. The girls will get your message out and your images out and disseminate right. it faster than you know Jehovah Witnesses. Right. But how hard is it dealing you know, with them? Is it hard? Through. Like when you have to take whoever? Who are you going with to Turkey with? You said with Miss Joy. Miss Joy. Now is that She's, fun or is that like crazy? Oh, Turkey is great. It's fun. You're just being paid to show up at a party. 
Right. And it's what? It's some guy in Turkey is hosting it's a party? A, it's a club owner in Turkey who wants, you know, celebrity models to, to host the party, to bring, you know, their element of sexiness to the venue and ultimately put them on a flyer, have them do video drops and people overseas who don't get to interact with these, you know, minor celebrities, now they get to do it. Right. How long do you think does the fame last once they're off the show? Like, like we mentioned Dre a few times oh on the show. Oh, my goodness. What's so funny is with Delicious, she hasn't been on TV in seven years, but when she showed up, you know, in Waldorf, Maryland, the girls were screaming like it was Justin Bieber. Wow. So because of social media, you can stay famous forever. What else would you be advising photographers to do to utilize some of the stuff that's working for you in terms of building an actual brand and not just the photo taking part? Yeah, it's always just, I always call it, you know, what, what do the, the, the Japanese call it? Reverse engineering, where you just right. find something that you like right. and reconstruct it, take it apart and see how it works. So right. this is true for anyone, for photographers, for models. See mm -hmm. someone who's doing well and do what they do. Figure out what they're doing. If there's a photographer, whether it be, you know, a Facet Studios or a 2020 or a MQ Images or, you know, uh, Milo at Spicy Girls, just see what they're doing and try right. to do that and bring your own level of professionalism and expertise to it and differentiate yourself that way. Right. But don't try to recreate the wheel as luck would have it, which is really just when preparation meets opportunity. I, Got a job at a booty magazine, got fired, and started my own. Right. But how hard is the competition in that field that you get? Because what hurts you guys in print? The fact that there's 20 other magazines that are trying to do the same content? Or just the fact that it's 2013 and not 1995? It's just the fact that it's print. <laughs> you know, people right. are not going to the newsstand to get news anymore. People, yeah. if you, back when we first started and, and when I started with Smooth in 05, if you wanted to know who the hot model was, you would go pick up Black Man, you would right. go pick up Smooth, you would go pick up King. You might have seen, you know, mm -hmm. Esther Baxter on the on the car of, you know, on, on the P.D. Pablo video on the right. hood of a car. But if you didn't see her in a magazine two months later, you would have forgot about her. Right. Because video girls just disappeared at that point. Right. So magazines gave them life, you know. But now, if you want to know who the hot model is, you go to this website. Go to World you, Star. You go whatever. to your timeline. Yeah. You really go to your timeline and you see who your friends are right. liking. You know, right. John? So right. that's what happens now. So <laughs> I have to look at everybody so else's feet. I can't tell you, there's so many models who want to be in show who've never actually touched the magazine. They've never actually physically, it just exists in digital format for them. So right. why fight that? Right. You know, we'll always have the printed product. We still have the printed product, but it used to take me six months to make a show girl. You would have mm -hmm. to fly to LA to meet with me. You would have to fly back a couple months later if you were lucky to shoot. And then right. you'd have to wait around for four to six months oh, for right. your four magazine to published. even published. Right. So it right. might take you, take, take some of our top yeah. showgirls. It took yeah. them a year from meet yeah. to actually print on new sense. Now I can meet a showgirl and I'm now I can meet a model and six days later she's a showgirl. Right. She has a, a whole spread published on Instagram. And if you're mm -hmm. looking at it, you don't know the difference. You, all you know is, Here's a model. She's a showgirl. She has the show branding. She looks beautiful. And that's what, you know, that's what's important. You got me thinking, I swear. Like, that's why I'm... Yeah. I, I really We am. have I'm... a couple more days together, so <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you thinking. No, this is good. I, I need to just, like, run with you for you the next could, two days. you could literally <laughs> publish a coffee table book every week. Right. Via Instagram, Instagram via Flickr, via right. Tumblr. Every week. You have such great work and such great business and such right. great art. But right. it's like you're keeping it all to yourself because you don't yeah. want to be judged in an open no, forum. Uh, don't think of it that way. Don't don't get me started. But I'm saying <laughs> don't think of it that way. Who cares what people like or don't right. like or what they think as long as they see what you're doing. But um, what's next for you? Is there another platform that you're looking at? You may not be able to say it. No. Yeah, no, no, there's always platforms. Remember, I mean, I said when we founded Show, it was founded on a multimedia platform. So, of course, right. there's film, there's television, there's books, there's any medium that right. if you look at our model release, it covers us for stuff that hasn't even been invented yet. Yeah, yeah. So we're yeah, I've always, seen that stuff. And it goes like in oh, perpetuity throughout the universe. Forever, like, right. So if we go to another planet, this is yes. still valid? Wow, yes. okay. So, yeah, so that's always the next thing. We just yeah. filmed a, a, a sizzle reel for a reality show, which is like a mixture of Bad Girls Club meets America's Next Top mm -hmm. Model. Um, we're trying to bring show cabaret to life where you can see models like Tammy Torres and Malaya actually perform a burlesque show. And that's dance interesting. You know, it's amazing to me that there's no burlesque in New York City. 
Like, like they cleaned up all the smut. Be. Right, you cleaned up all the smut, but you go to like to Las Vegas and you know, you're just walking with your family and you'll see ads for like Peep Show or whatever the current one is. And I'm always shocked that Times Square doesn't have that. Cause well, I think Times I mean, Square that, could support that. That particular art is, it's like a niche art right now, right. but we're going to make it what we do more. I say burlesque, but really right. what it is is like choreographed striptease. No, that'll be huge. They'd be like the Pussycat Dolls, not yeah. the group, but the, the show the Pussycat show. Dolls. If Which you did a version of that with yeah. those showgirls, forget it. That'd be right. huge. Get and a picture hence, of six of them standing When there. we found oh, a show, that one, it, yeah. not only was it an art magazine, and that's the reason yeah. why we chose the name, but we knew that the term showgirls. Right. So now you see magazines, they want to start, and they, you know, they come up with the dumbest names to extend right. their brand. Right. Like, Showgirl is the perfect way to extend your right. brand, you know? Yeah. Ultimately, it's about them. That was a good name. That's like when a guy came out with Spin. It's like, wow, what a great name, because no matter what you put music on, it spins. Like, you know, mm -hmm. audio cassette, reel to reel, CDs, it all spins. Even a hard drive on the original right. iPad, iPod probably spun. Right. It was such a great name, but Show, it's like, She's showing her body, you know, she's a showgirl, right. it's a show. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. it is, the name definitely, like, definitely works. But I think the idea of it, like a, a cabaret kind of thing, yeah. traveling, whatever. Exactly. It's just finding the venues is the thing. Who's got a stage with some decent lighting? Yeah, there's and, stages everywhere. I think it's know. really just putting it together and, and letting the audience, you know, make sure the audience is there. You never want to try right. to create demand, make sure the demand is there, which I believe Oh, of is. course it is. No, because the thing about celebrity is people just want to be around celebrities. It doesn't even matter what the celebrity, like they're going to go see Dre, like they could look at Drea in the magazine in a bikini and then they'll pay to go watch her in a dress at a party. Right. So now you tell her she's going to be in the bikini at this event. Forget about right. it. Of exactly. course they're going to go right. there and it's better for her because she's going to make more money too because they're really coming for her it's not even right. a hot club it's hot because she's in the club right when you do that right. that's cool that might work right here but we got a studio right here we got backdrop <laughs> <laughs> well you could do it here if you were just filming it if we were just filming it no, to put it exclusive up. private well yeah showgirls oh yeah you could do stuff here 30 people we do we, oh. we have a studio in la where we're thinking right. about doing stuff like that so yeah. yeah yeah that definitely works oh yeah i like that though but i guess I think the, the, the lessons to be learned from what you're saying, I, I would think is, you know, obviously you gotta be willing to take chances. Correct? Yeah. And you have to be willing to embrace whatever is out there. Like you, you said, to I be think. be willing the, to respond to the marketplace with alacrity, with speed. Right. And that's one of the things that me being a, a photographer and shooting, I wouldn't call myself a photographer quite yet, but me actually shooting the magazine, we're able to respond with speed. So I have this thing where I said, you know, be first, be, uh, it was be first, be beneficial, mm -hmm. and be timely. So it was actually be, be first, be timely, be beneficial to not just to me, but to the models. And that's what shooting allows me to do. If I meet Dalicia, like I did in a parking lot in LA, right. you know, two days later, you can see who she is. So I'm first, I'm timely because I'm first. You right. know, part of being timely is just being first. And then I can be beneficial to myself, to my audience, as well as to that particular model. Right. You know, who's a. Who do you guys credit? Who do you directly or you credit the magazine to kind of putting on a map? Like, name a few that you feel the magazine put on the map that we know. A few? There's, <laughs> there's, there's dozens of them. I mean, if you look at like our first cover was Erica Mena, who right. we actually took that cover from a shoot that I did with Smooth. Um, people like Jessica Maximus, right. Sulin, Madero. Before you go back to Erica Mena, cause she's on Love and Hip Hop New York right, now, which is the only reality show I like, believe it or not. I love the New York one. I don't know if it's cause I know so many of the cast or just cause it's a good show, but uh -huh. my wife watches all the reality shows. They all drive me crazy uh -huh. except that one. But, um, she's still really pretty and she looks well, young she's still now. Young. I mean, Erica How was, old was she when she you was got shot? She was 15 her? years old when I did that shoot for Smooth. Are you serious? Yeah. She was, her mother was there at the shoot. I didn't know she was 15. She didn't wow. act like she was 15, but she's what, 25, 26 now, wow. and that was 10 years ago. So did anybody, did, like, did, wow, that, that, like, that's crazy. Did well, people you know, know what, when they you know what, though, it, that she was that young? Why is that crazy? Because in she America, wasn't people doing, have a problem with that. No, people don't have a problem with it. Look at the cover of Vogue. Look at the cover of Elle. A lot of yeah, those but, models. Uh, yeah, but no, 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 no. Right. Yeah, but nothing. Don't give me well, that whole double standard. Well, they say they have a, I have a problem with it, but. But I'm saying, know. don't give me that double standard <laughs> where if it's a little skinny white girl, she's cute, but if it's right. like an urban girl, it's sexual, and oh my God. Right. Like, no, that's a double standard. Models are able to earn money from teenage years. Why can't 
they do that in an urban setting. It wasn't her spread wasn't mm-hmm. overly sexualized. It was more of a fashion spread than anything else. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I saw the spread. I know the cover was Yeah, great. she was, it was a pink cover. She's wearing a black Playboy jacket and you know, it was right. definitely more fashion and lifestyle than it was. Yeah. It wasn't designed to titillate. Right. She wasn't doing anything erotic in nature or, right. you know, raunchy at all. So to me, her mother was there, was signed off on it. It was right. okay. You, you have to remember we did the Mario shoot. Right. Here and the girl in his verse, let, let me love you video. She was 16 yeah. when she did that. Right. And I shot her for smooth when she was like 16, 17 and her parents were there. Right. You know, and that was right after we shot Mario at this right. very yeah, studio. Do yeah. you remember yeah. for yeah, Smooth? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For Smooth. It was like a fashion right. shoot. We yeah. were doing fashion. Right. So, yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But go back. Who else have you guys I mean, well, map, okay. Map, the the whole idea the whole idea with our reality show, it's it's all about if you look at Drea, if you look at Erica Mena, if you look at Rosa Acosta, if you look at um, Natalie Nunn, a lot of these people started as showgirls. So mm-hmm. we've put a lot of them on the map, a Cubana Lust, a Jessica Maximus, a Sulin Medeiros. These women have collectively made hundreds of thousands. Yeah, like Sulin gets dollars. mainstream, like she'll do something. Yeah, Sulin was just in mainstream. Scary Movie 5 or yeah. whatever it was, and she gets paid, yeah. you know, tens of thousands of dollars to host parties in places wow. like, you know, Turkey, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we've put a lot of different models on the map of right. Brenda Lynn, and who you still might know and have like a crush on. I mentioned right. Jessica Maximus, Alora DeRay, right. uh, Tammy Torres has been a showgirl. So, I mean, right. we pretty much worked with everyone, you know, and me, even when I first started, you know, I gave Esther Baxter her first cover. I gave Vita Guerra her first right. cover. I gave Kai Toy her first Is cover. Is there one note that sticks in your head that you thought like, oh my God, this girl's so hot. And then. Yeah, Dalicia. No, no, I mean, no, no. But and it didn't click. It wasn't. It didn't click. Like if you said her name now, no one knows. Cause every name you said, there's I a, know. There's a, and it's not because she's not hot. It's because she didn't want it. She didn't want it. Like the, the, the thing about Drea is when I, when I started working with Drea, you know, she was telling me to put her on the cover now. She was like, right. Sean, I'm hot right now. And I'm like, no, you're not. I was like, you're not hot right now, but you will be. But she knew she was hot right now. So it was a mentality. Right. And a lot of these girls do not have that mentality. Right. They really just want to do it because they wanted to just accomplish something and that's it. So right. if being on the cover of show is your end goal, you're not the type of model I want to work with. I want that to be your beginning goal. Right. You know, or and you want something ultimate. bigger. It's a stepping yeah. stone and you want yeah, more. Definitely. But was there a girl though that you thought was like, Oh my God, this girl's going to be the next thing. And then for whatever reason, it did not click yeah. with the public. Obviously, I don't remember her name either. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we forgot her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's the, no, because sometimes there's a girl you shoot. There's a and lot then, of girls like that. You, you have know. your hopes and dreams for, for certain models and right. you tend to fall in love with, uh, with a model. I know for me, it was like a Laura DeRay and, to, yeah, see, the, I don't know for the, her. Yeah, for her. the life of me, you know, I don't understand why the audience didn't, you know, click to her the way that I did. Yeah. And I think a part of it was that she didn't really live that lifestyle. You know, mm-hmm. she wasn't like the Irving Glamour model lifestyle. Right. She had like an alter ego was right. Laura DeRay. But when she did other stuff, she was, you know, she was just her, right. her person. She was just Laura, you know, hairstylist in Austin, Texas, you know. Right. So... Um, we gave her every opportunity, every stage, every platform, but it just right. didn't pan out the way that, that it should have panned out. So, you know, you have to be careful as a publisher, a business owner. Like right. you were saying, you right. want to do a podcast that you like. I want right. to do a magazine that I like that it didn't right. do shit, right. you know, so you well, can't but, do that. You have to respond to the marketplace, to the audience. Right. And right now the audience is saying, if you shoot something, I want to see it five seconds after you shoot it. I right. want comments. I want to know who's in that picture. And then right. five minutes later, I want to see another picture. And right. you're not doing that. And that's that. what you're responding. And, but that's what you're saying we should be responding to. That's what to. you should be doing because right. that's what your audience wants. And if you're not going to do it, I'm going to get it from somebody else. Right. So you're going to get photographers who haven't been doing this as long as you've been, you know, you've right. forgotten more about photography right. than they'll ever know. Right. But they have 30, 50,000 followers. Right. Because they're taking pictures and they're putting it up on Instagram and then they're doing it again and they're going out and they're shooting new models and they're being innovative and they're, right. they're learning Photoshop. And they're taking models and they're managing them and they're making them into stars yeah. online. Yeah. Not, yeah. you know, online. And that's what you have to do these days. You ask me what can photographers do? Right. That's what they can do. But on a similar note, early in the show career, the, I'm thinking it's early, you guys did an issue called The Art of Sexy. No, no, no. The show is, well, yeah, we did an issue. It wasn't called The Art of Sexy. It was called. What was that called? The evolution of sex. Okay, the evolution of sexy. We could show the art of sexy right, by the name of the magazine that's from always day been, one. Right. It was called the evolution of sexy and, and, um, there was a photographer, I forgot his, Russell James, he, he did a book, 
the behind the scenes Victoria's Secret and it was all right. black and white and right. they were changing and they were getting ready right. and it was all like verite and we, we did like yeah. three issues like It was that. amazing. And it was I saved those acclaim. issues. They were great. Critical I acclaim. It. it was like an independent movie we all love but no one's ever seen. Right. You know, but again, the, the audience didn't respond to it. So you, again, you, you can't create demand. That's the one thing I learned in business school. You can't create demand. You can right. build demand. But you know, I thought, hey, here's something I would really like. I thought it was cool. And it was cool yeah. for like a coffee table book. It's cool for Instagram. It was fantastic. When I put those yeah. pictures up on Instagram now, right. people love them, but it doesn't like cost me because I don't have to print them. Right. You know, but if I had to print them, and take a risk that it's right. you know it helps move my brand forward right. but as right. a product it didn't work as a product and right. you have to distinguish the two you have products and you have things that move your brand forward and that's what right. you need to do right like your product is your time your product is your expertise right but there's things that you can do to move your brand forward that you know it's not a part of your product and that's interacting with your fans on social media and using that as a platform right. to, to have but people see your vision. You know what's funny? It just occurred to me. There's a joke they make on Instagram because they go like, oh, you're a model. Who's your agency? Instagram. And it's supposed to be a joke. But you're almost essentially you saying that that's fine. That's our competitor right now. We have girls who are beautiful who it used to be every girl wanted to be in the magazine. No more because if you have Instagram, I don't need a magazine right. because you just wanted to be in a magazine because you wanted to be seen. You wanted to you be famous to be people noticed. know you, right. Not necessarily like famous, but you wanted right. to be seen. You wanted right. to, to look beautiful. And so now you have girls who, you yeah. know, they, you know, you have strippers now who don't yeah. need to be in a magazine because yeah. they have Instagram. Well, and it's true because, like you're saying, if print doesn't really sell, she could probably get more views on a photo on her Instagram than right. just the print version right. would give her. Now, you guys as show could certainly get her way more than her own Instagram. Right. But if we talk just the print magazine, there's a ton of girls who could probably get more views on their own Instagram. And keep in mind, it's not even so much about yeah. that because, to be completely honest with you, I don't think we could get as many views through print as Drea could get on her Instagram. That's what I'm, that's she, what I'm saying. She has a right. million you know, followers. But even right. a girl with 50,000 followers right. is can, you know... So what Instagram gives you is the immediacy of it. Because right. if you don't do it now, there's somebody else who's right. doing it five seconds later. But essentially, there's nothing wrong. You're, you're basically saying there really is nothing wrong with being an Instagram model. That if someone says, who's I'm your agency on Instagram? There, is there anything wrong with it? But it's not. you're not a model. Right. You're not a model. You're just someone with an Instagram page. You're not a model. You're right. not. Now, if you use it to promote your own brand and promote That's your what I'm own saying. Okay, now you can, but you can. Yeah, but, it, but it's stuff. not enough. You still need right. the validation of a magazine. You still need the validation of print. You okay. still need someone to co-sign you. If you're just on Instagram, okay, you know, these days, because you have 50,000 followers, if you only have 200 likes on a picture, it means your followers aren't real. Right. So you have that a lot as well. So you still need an outside source. To, For to the val- outside validation. To, to, to validate okay. you and to, you know, expose you to other avenues. There's still a lot of people. Who, who don't go to Instagram for news or who don't go to right. Instagram to see what's hot. There's right. still people out there, you know, so you have to incorporate it into what you do. It's just a part of your package. It's right. a part of your strategy. You know, the, these models that you see, the Tahiris, the Kimbellas, the, the, the Dreas and, and these celebrities, they still right. want to be in magazines, you know, all the, the big white celebrities, they still want to do magazines because people right. still have to see you in a variety of, right. of, of forums. Okay. You know? Very cool. Very cool. All right. Um, anything else we can touch upon before we go? No. We, uh, one of, how many followers do you have right now on Instagram? I don't check it all the time. It's probably, oh, I'm filming on the phone when I came to check. It's probably about 2,000 on Instagram. Yeah, you should be on it every day. You should be checking yeah. it. You should be uploading pictures. I mean, with your style of shooting, yeah. you could go. I remember I, I did I did a shoot with a photographer, um, Steve Diet Getty. Right. Look him up. You would love him. This guy right. did some amazing stuff right. on his iPhone. At a, and yeah. I'm like, I'm well, paying see, you $1,500 yeah, and you're yeah. shooting with it. Right. He had another camera, but yeah. he was shooting with his iPhone. But at the end of the yeah. day, it didn't matter. Well, you see what I do, though, in place of shooting on the iPhone, because I don't enjoy it, I use the Leica with an iFi card and I transfer it to the phone. So I can get stuff to the phone instantly. Just I prefer no, to shoot no, on, no, the, no, on the, the Leica. Phone is just, the phone instead. is a camera. I'm not talking about how you right. upload it or whatever. Right. But I can do it but from I, the phone. But I was yeah. just saying, like, that's something. I could be posting more. What I was saying is you could be on a subway and shoot a whole series right. from 59th to 125th right. Street, you know, on the D train. Right. And upload it as soon as you get out. And your yeah. fans would love you for it. Right. They would love yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I create a lot of content because with BET in particular, I shoot, this week I shot five, is shooting it, five BET shows. I got one tonight still. Is it content, and, John, if it doesn't exist in media? 
don't know what you mean. Is it content if it only exists on your computer? Oh, well, BT's got it, but, you know, I see what Regardless. you're saying. It's not content for me because most of the time I don't That's post that on Instagram. It's not content if no one sees it. Yeah, I don't usually post the BT stuff on my Instagram. Well, I just don't. And I should. I'm, I'm going to start, I think. I, I'm going to uh, think about what we're yeah. saying, you know. Yeah. And then there's a, I shoot a lot, like, yeah, I could be flooding right. Instagram. Right, exactly. <laughs> What is wrong you know. with you? Hey, Ray. Hey, this is Ray. Maybe Ray should say a quick hello. I don't know. We're running out of time because I actually have a BET show tonight. It, what time is it on your right phone there? now it is 5.38. Wow, that's bad. I have to be there in 22 minutes. So um, I'm going to break this right now. Sean, man, this was so good. And um, I'm going to be in L.A. in like two weeks. we got to hang out. And maybe we could do another podcast That'd in L.A. Great. If you've got time your, for real, I, I'm going to bring, bring your some stuff. stuff. with you. i got a more mobile version. And we're going to try. Maybe we can try to do that in L.A. and talk to you again because – this was tremendously informative for me, and I got a feeling it's informative for other people. So I seriously thank you. You know for why it was today, informative man. for other people? Why? <laughs> I know because why. it just wasn't about you. <laughs> well, I got the second half or right. Or how you see the thing. I got the second half right, right? Well, you got to keep great. it like that. I got it. No you should problem. talk like I get hyper. 20 to 30%. You know. I get hyper. What do you want from me, man? I get hyper. I got stuff to say. All right, oh, that's it. Bye, bye, people. You got stuff to say. Yeah, a lot of people have stuff to say. I know, I know. Else, you know, but it's funny. My sister themselves. listens to every episode, and she gives me really good feedback. And seriously, I we shot, we did one episode. I did with my assistant Medina, and I talked the whole episode, and I rejected it. I shot. We did it because I fucked it up basically. Okay, so I want you to come on the hotline right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.